Yo, what is going on guys? Gia Quinto here bringing you a PvP Dark Souls Remastered video today. We're going to do something a little bit different, but before we even get into that, I just want to say thank you, hello, and welcome to the channel to all the new subs who have been subbing in lately. Thank you guys so much for taking time out to view the content that I push out, and it's definitely motivating me to make more videos, so thank you guys so much because I absolutely love Dark Souls 1, and I've expressed that multiple times. Uh, now today, as I stated before, this is going to be a PvP video. This is a take on my old build that I used to run on Xbox 360. I made a few modifications and I'm sure there's similar builds out there floating around. I'm calling this one the Obscure Moon. Now this is a soul level 100 build. 40 faith, 30 dexterity, 35 endurance and some strength, enough strength to wield the weapons that we want to use, or at least I want to use personally in my own build. Um, this is a Faith Dexterity build with just a lot of those points going into Endurance. And it revolves around, again, Dexterity weapons. Uh, I love to use Katanas. I love the Falcon. I have no shame saying that. Uh, I used that a lot on my previous build, but this build... Specifically, this new build focuses katanas and weapons that are going to get you in and out of the fight. Because with my old build, it was really chunky, and it was more of the in-your-face, I'm going to take damage and just stagger you. The stereotypical Falcon build, that's what I was running back in the day. This one is a bit different, uh, where getting that face value of 70 poise to take those initial hits to essentially get in and out of fights... So that way we can lighten our armor to move faster and just have more control over just consistent positioning and evasion. So the whole goal of this build is to not get hit. So you stack that on top of obviously wielding your Dark Moon Blade and then the Wrath of Gods to push aggressive enemies off you. That's what the motion is going forward into PvP. So let's get into that now. I am so excited to run this through with you guys just because this armor set is absolutely awesome, this combination here. So let's flip screens and get into that now. Okay, so in starting off on the right of your screen, I just want to say I created my character with the intention of getting the master key and not thinking that I'd be missing out on a few points that could have went into and invested in the long term for kind of perfecting what I wanted out of my PvP build. So when you're creating characters, definitely keep in mind, is this character going to be for PvP? Uh, am I going to lose out on those few points? Like, for example, I could have chucked mine into Vitality or Additional Endurance, or maybe even an extra attunement for a spell. So on this build, in this video specifically, because I do use a few weapons, we're going to use the Washing Pole with the Dark Moon Talisman. Now. The dingy robe, do not sleep on this robe. This is the robe that you get from the Firekeeper who was assassinated by Lotric and completing that whole side quest line. 71 magic defense, 54 lightning defense, and high defensive values at the cost of three weight. So this build caters around having the minimum for poise because again, you're not taking hits. You do want good defensive value, but you want to be lightweight so you can quick roll. And then on top of that, I'm going to stack in, this is the heaviest thing, which this really doesn't even matter, the 11.5 pound, 28 poise Hevel Gauntlets. This is absolutely essential for this build. Without these gauntlets, you cannot reach 70 poise. And then the Bloodstained Skirt, which again, it's just something you don't want to sleep on. Not at 2.5 pounds, you do not want to sleep on this. Um, I used to use the Xanus Ropes. But in comparison, you're really not losing much, and the robes have 10 fire defense. So you're trading off 10 fire defense for a significant increase, 24 points, putting you at 34.7, and then you're still getting good defensive value. It's not on par with Zenzis, but it's not far off, and it's still lighter. I mean, that's the biggest thing. You look at the amount of weight you can then shift into using heavier weapons and that's the whole point of having 20 strength with this build so i can wield the washing pole and at least meet you know a semi-heavy threshold for a dex build to where i can quick roll still move around pretty 
pretty swiftly and just get in and out. Do what I need to do. So it's nice to have the washing pole, especially against the heavier enemies because you have that reach. And then Havel's Ring. It would not be possible without Havel's Ring because that is putting me up at 112.5 pounds. And then the Wolf Ring, which is the last thing that is going to get me to that 70 poise. So the 40 on top of the 31 that I already have is putting me at that threshold to take those face hits that initially being under 70 poise you you get staggered up let's face it you know you do run into those weapons that stagger you up and being that this build has low vitality it's it's gg so with all that being said let's jump into the arena this is more of an arena build i probably wouldn't use this against you know people who are gang spanking i'm um, invading you know running around doing the random wild stuff but this has been so just good for me in the arena and you know pulling off win streaks and just getting that consistency so i'm really happy with where this is going because it's really nice to take a look at my old chunky build and have that alternate option so with all that being said yeah let's not talk any longer let's get into the arena and look at some fights so all these fights are recorded at the time that I'm actually doing the commentary over this video. And I'm not going to go in chronological order because I wanted this fight to be first. This is against a heavy armor user. So even though we're running the Kanye West clothing line armor set, and we're getting this amazing awkward defensive value off that, we're not going to sit here and try and stagger and beat on this guy and take hits. The goal with this build is to be in and out. You want to run around you want to get the opponent to make the first strike. And there's multiple ways of doing that. Now, if you're familiar with the washing pole, you know that people run and poke in Dark Souls 3. And that's harder to do in this version of Dark Souls, but you still want to resort to it. You still want to use, especially as a lightweight build, you still want to resort to creating the chip damage or creating, like if it's a lightweight user, you would create that initial hit that then chains into you potentially staggering a target but with this heavy armor user that's not going to happen so our goal here is to get around and behind him because if which this guy wasn't really super defensive but if you're playing against somebody who's defensive like extremely defensive like they're wearing this heavy armor but they're not making the first move you want to scare them you don't want to be stupid you don't want to rush them from the front you want to try and get around them so you mainly want to do that by getting close, and if you're good with dodging, rolling towards the back, or staying unlocked, kind of faking feints, and running around them, kind of edging into them. But I always open my fights, especially against the heavy guys, with analyzation. You know, running around and seeing if they're going to be defensive or if they're going to be aggressive. That's the most important thing. So sometimes you might take the L off the first exchange, which if you're invading, that sucks for you because you just don't, you might not get that second chance to, to invade that person, but at least in the arena you have multiple goes. And what I love about this build specifically, being that you only get the one cast on the Dark Moon Blade unless you go through multiple playthroughs, uh, your items refresh, your spells refresh, I, I should say, when you die. So you can just keep replenishing this thing. And that's the whole point of having the 40 faith, so we could take advantage of that. Now, the reason we have the 30 endurance is because when Dark Moon and Chan is down, you still need DPS. So you want your scaling to be of high quality. So that means having a plus 15 weapon to enchant first off. And when that enchant is down, you're still getting that outstanding scaling. It's really important that you do that because you also run into users who will cast magic armor, a great, great barrier, I should be saying. Uh, that's the proper spell in which you just cover yourself in that defensive magic force that is going to take something like Dark Moon and really kind of dim it down. So you definitely want to have other options, which luckily with my current weight, I could put on a second weapon, but nothing too heavy because then I sacrifice the light roll for a heavier one in turn. And at that point, once you get into that weight class, you may as well just up your armor as a whole into like the black iron set or just something a little heavier. You know, things that fluctuate into my older build, which I rock the armor of the sun with the 
Sun Mask from Gwendolyn to get the increased fake damage, but I'll save that for another video. So that was that fight. I just wanted you to kind of watch it as I just kind of talked randomly and not so much commentated everything that was going on and threw everything at you. So now let's get into the next one. So this next fight, we're off to a great start because my controller dies. That's awesome. But luckily, land base waifu was honorable enough to let me boot that back up. Plug my charger in really quick and get my enchant off. So now this isn't the complete polar opposite of the Havel user. This is more of like the in-between, like that randomness that you find, whether it be a large character or a small one. Somebody who just loves to use what they love to use. And she's rocking the dark hand with a middle of the pack sword. So my strategy here, or at least with somebody who is middle of the pack and their weapon isn't too heavy, be more aggressive. You know, definitely push with the frontal attacks, but leave enough endurance to back off. So yeah, you want to analyze, but you don't have to spend all day doing it. She gets off an outstanding parry here, and I needed to show that because she pulls it off again later on in the video. And that's one thing I love about the dark hand. And just one thing you guys can add to something you may potentially want to use. Um, just the the variety and the appeal of parrying with something that may not give you the most perfect defense. But it's just a nice way to catch somebody off guard. So if you're invading and you pull that off on somebody, obviously they have no chance to come back from that because they're not in an arena. Luckily for us, we're going back and forth, so I get the one, she gets the one, and yeah, we're just going to go at it. So, I definitely give her credit because her, her timing is just absolutely outstanding. And then she pulls out the katana, which I'm oh so familiar with. You know what somebody's going to do when they use your weapon most of the time. So I knew she was going to go for the poke. I get the backstab, she gets the parry, she takes me out, and I'm going to come back in. And I spawn right under her. So right now it's neck and neck. It's currently tied up. I opened with Wrath to let her know, yo, I have this. Just so that way, if she wanted to be aggressive with me, she now had that in mind. Of, oh, you know, if, if I try and be aggressive here, that's the whole reason I bring Wrath of Gods. It's not to spam it, but let the player know, like, if you're going to try and push me, this is what I got. So she leaves herself wide open there, and I'm able to pull that backstab off. And then I wanted to see if I could pull off the Wrath upon her, you know, getting up right off the gecko. But she does a phenomenal job of dodging both those Wraths. And now it's just going to be a sword battle for this next round here. So I noticed that she created a few openings, but I thought she may have been trying to fake me out. Turns out she followed up with a swipe, and then she tries to pull the Dark Hand grab there. So I'm waiting for her to make a move. There it is. But... I missed my swing. I was going for the backstab, I realized I didn't have enough time, so I tried to edge off the chip that I would need. And now, it's coming in on the end. So she makes the mistake of trying to parry me when I'm on her edge and I'm able to pull off that backstab. So now that she's out, this is what I do on the arena, I enchant my Dark Moon Blade, but the match is complete at that point. So I'm gonna leave it there because I don't wanna throw too much at you guys, but this has been my first PvP video. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you would add to this. Let me know if you would go up levels and where you would allocate those points to kind of capitalize off what I have going here. And let me know what you guys want to see in future videos. And that's pretty much been it. This has been Gia. I hope you guys enjoyed this build, this showcase, and the video as a whole. I will catch you guys on the next one. Good night. Later.